Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, my name's Rebecca and this is the lovely Emika and we're from the School of Animal and Veterinary Sciences. Put your hand up if you know where Roseworthy is. Oh, more than I thought. Well done. Woohoo! Um, so we're from Roseworthy campus which is an hour's drive north from here and uh, I'm going to give you a bit of a spiel about Roseworthy campus, the programs we offer and then what careers you can get um, by uh, taking either animal or veterinary sciences. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to come and speak to uh, myself or Amica after the talk or alternatively please head towards the marquee and speak to um, our lovely helpers and there and there's a few activities for you to do but we can definitely field any questions you may have about the program or the admissions process. So Roseworthy campus, it, we've got a bit of history um, surrounding it. it. The college, it was originally the, um, uh, an agricultural college which was established in 1883. So it was the first agricultural college in Australia and graduates that had um, an uh, agricultural degree from Roseworthy were highly renowned. It was an internationally well-renowned degree. In the um, 1970s, uh, the university took it over and then it became the University of Adelaide's Roseworthy campus. And at the time, uh, we had the one um, degree there, but that's since moved to wait. So now um, we're solely animal and veterinary science out at Roseworthy. It's a 1600 hectare um, commercial farm, uh, representative of a Mediterranean um, agriculture. Um, as I said before, it's, it's got a high level recognition both nationally and internationally. And on campus, because we are now a vet school, we have 24-hour um, uh, companion uh, or state-of-the-art companion animal health centre. So for smallies as well as our largies, so our equine health centre or our equine clinic, our production animal clinic. Um, we also have a research piggery, a research poultry unit, and also areas to do research on sheep, beef cattle, aquaculture, and as well as fauna yards to do some wildlife work as well. So we're quite a large campus which can do a lot of diverse um, research on a wide variety of species. So it's actually a really cool place to work. It's also a really beautiful campus. It is slightly isolated, but that's what makes it nice about it. There's trees and birds, and the students r ride around on bicycles, and it's just a really nice environment. It is a residential college, so a lot of our students live on campus, so it's got a really good vibe to it. Um, so when you come into the main gate, you'll see the beautiful admin building. So this is the, the oldest part of Roseworthy, which has just been restored, so it's heritage listed. So if you don't see this building when you come on campus, I don't know where you are. Um, but you can't miss it, and there's the, the three flags out, out the front. Um, so it is a residential facility for around 150 students, hoping to expand on that um, because we've got more students uh, coming in through the animal science program and as we've now di um, diversified um, our veterinary science degree. Um, because it is a residential campus, we have a gym, we have a swimming pool. Well, actually, we don't have a tavern. We converted the tavern to the gym, uh, which I think is a more healthier option. Um, we have a refectory um, where you can buy food, which helps. Uh, lecture theatres, teaching labs, research labs, recreational areas. So we have tennis courts, basketball courts, uh, soccer pitch, football pitch. Um, we have the student hub which is being developed at the moment and also a library so we're quite self-sufficient out at Roseworthy. We also have co-located partners because we are a rural campus and our programs focus on produ pr primarily production animals. Um, we have um, SADI which is um, the South Australian Research Development Institute, the life so we have the Livestock System Alliance, so their government um, uh, entities that work in the area of livestock research. We have the Pork CRC, which is based out at Roseworthy that uh, works in all aspects of, um, of pig research and also Australian Grain Technologies, um, which are further down uh, the road. Um, so the School of Animal and Veterinary Science, we're quite a new school. So we were established in 2008. So the animal science degree has been going since 2004. Uh, when we were, in the, we were in the School of Agriculture, Food and Wine for a while, and then we got the, the vet school. So then animal science joined with veterinary science and now we're the School of Animal and Veterinary Science. So that was in 2008. So we've got approximately 650 students in the school and over 100 staff, um, and this includes academic and, and support staff. Uh, and um, the good thing about this was that it reinvigorated the campus and is becoming the major animal and veterinary research and clinical centres for the state. So all of our new clinics are state-of-the-art and offer um, high-quality service and um, 
um, in terms of surgery and pathology and diagnostics. So we offer three programs. So we offer the Bachelor of Science Animal Science, the Bachelor of Science Veterinary Bioscience, and then that undergraduate degree leads into the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. So the entire veterinary um, program for you to become a qualified veterinarian is six years. You do your, all your clinical training in the DVM, or the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Um, so this is a lovely picture of our 24 hour, I'm just plugging our clinic. It's 24 hours emergency clinic. It is out at Roseworthy, but again, you have access to um, excellent surgeons and excellent uh, care. So 24 hours a day. So if your animal happens to fall sick at three o'clock in the morning, we'll be there to help you out. Okay, so that's our, our clinic. So what's the difference between the two degrees? So animal science is a study of the biology of animals with a focus on vertebrates, particularly mammals, but we can't forget chickens because they're awesome. Okay, I work with chickens. Okay, um, and their function. So the animal science program is a beautiful program because it's so diverse and encompasses a lot of disciplines as well as a lot of species. So physiology, nutrition, microbiology, health, um, behavior, welfare, ethics, handling, husbandry. Um, microbiology, or um, molecular biology, genetics, in wildlife, equine, companion animals, um, production animals, so uh, pigs, poultry, beef, sheep, okay, so, um, and, and wildlife, we do wildlife subjects as well. So it's a beautiful program. Now, the veterinary science program deals with the application of medical, diagnostic, and therapeutic principles to companion animals, wildlife, and livestock animals, as well as equine. Okay, so that's your clinical training, okay? So if you want to become a, a veterinarian or you want to get into the veterinarian realm, then the veterinary science program is for you. If you're just interested in how animals work and you just love um, science and you love the animal science part of it, then the animal science program is for you, okay? So, and both of them do overlap, especially in undergraduate. It's just in the DVM when you, you go into your clinical training. So they're much the, so the two undergraduates are much of a muchness, much of a muchness. Come on, whoops. Okay, so the Bachelor of Science Animal Science is three years, uh, with the option of doing a, a one year honours uh, year after that three years, which we recommend our students doing because it give, makes them more employable by running their own research project, and it's a great year to kind of step out, step away from that sitting in lecture theatres, sitting exam type of study. Um, so the 2016 ATAR was 68.75. There are no prerequisites, but there is assumed knowledge of chemistry and math studies. I would also recommend, if you can, to take biology because when you get to first year um, in university, that transition from year 12 to university can be a bit of a slap in the face if you don't have that biology background. So if you have the option of still taking biology, then please do. It's not necessary, but that's just my personal um, experience. This is basically a beautiful pathway for further graduate and postgraduate studies. So a lot of our students will do honours and they may go out into the workforce or they go on to do a PhD and become research scientists, as such as what I did. The Bachelor of Science Veterinary Bioscience is also three years, but there are prerequisites. You must have chemistry and you must have math studies. There is an assumed knowledge of physics. Other um, veterinary science programs interstate require physics as a prerequisite. So if you're applying for other programs, make sure you've got that one. But come here, it's good. Um, so the ATAR threshold is 90 for year 12s or a GPA threshold for people that have um, done some previous university study is around five. Um, so with this ATAR threshold, you also need to um, do a questionnaire which um, comes through applying through SATAC. And then depending on how well you do in your questionnaire, you'll get invited to, to a multiple mini interview, which is um, station based. You are then ranked by, on your ATAR and your interview score, which is a 50-50 balance. And the offers um, basically are given to the highest ranking applicants. We usually only take 50. Oh, 60 now. Woo, good for you. Okay, so 60 students. 10 more than the So 60 students. So it is highly competitive. So the veterinary science program only takes 60. Um, tertiary transfer students, if you've got animal science or a related degree, um, a credit average for chemistry one and biology one courses may apply. So if you don't get into veterinary science from year 12, you can do a year of university study and then try and apply 
for the next year, but in saying that it is highly competitive and it does vary from year to year how many places may be available. It is not a guaranteed transfer. So in one year there might be five places available, in another year there might be one, in another year there might be none. Okay, so again, once you're in, it doesn't guarantee you entry. So keep working at it. If that's what you want to do, I've had students who've done honours or even masters and then transferred back into second year veterinary bioscience to continue their studies. So they end up doing 12 years of study. But if you want it that badly, it is a possibility. Okay, and some students really want it that badly. That's how competitive it is. So um, again, whenever you transfer, regardless of how many years of university study you've done, you always go into second year veterinary bioscience, okay, as long as you can get credit for that first year. The Doctor of Veterinary Medicine is a three-year clinical postgraduate degree. The entry is by successful completion of the veterinary bioscience program, as well as completion of 12 weeks of animal um, husbandry extramural studies. So you have to do placement uh, in addition to the veterinary science or the veterinary bioscience program, so 12 weeks. Okay, so once you've done that 12-week component as well as done well in your, your veterinary bioscience degree, a GPA of four, you need a minimum, then you can move into the DVM program. Okay, so again, just because you're in veterinary bioscience doesn't mean that you have direct entry into DVM. You still have to meet requirements and academic standards. So the veterinary profession in 2016, uh, just to give you um, a few stats, so there's approximately 9,000 vets registered in Australia and approximately over 500 in South Australia. 60% of new graduates start in mixed or large animal practice. That's where the demand is. All right, so if you're interested in playing with kittens and puppies, you might want to reconsider your career choice because um, most of the jobs are in that rural base, um, sort of large animal type of um, field and 40% go into small animal practice. Um, uh, basically, the general move towards city-based practices over the next five years, I guess, as the urban sprawl increases, they're going to have more houses. More houses means more pets, therefore more vet clinics are necessary. So that might, you might get a greater uh, chance of smallies later on. There's equal numbers of women and men in practice. Um, but majority of veterinary students are female, especially animal science students. I usually have majority of female and five boys. So <laughs> come on, boys, let's do this degree because you're outnumbered, always outnumbered. I always remember the boys first because there's always five. I don't know why. It's like one, two, three. Yeah, that's my boy lot, but most of them are chicks. So if you're a boy, it's pretty good. <laughs> All right. So animal science, um, again, in terms of animal and veterinary science careers, the management of animal breeding, feeding and care, and veterinary science is animal medicine. So there's an enormous variety of careers from both degrees. And there's hugely different types of career paths from both degrees. Just because you do veterinary science doesn't mean that you're going to do um, neuters and spays in a vet clinic for the rest of your life. You've got to think outside the box a bit. And the same goes for animal science. Yes, you come out of it, so what do I get? Or you become an animal scientist. But that could be anything. So you have to think outside the box. You have to be w willing to go interstate, willing to go like up north somewhere, maybe even go overseas to get your job. It depends what you want to do. Work out what your passion is and then work out a path to that. But keep your options open. If you stay too focused, oh, I just want to work in Adelaide, that's probably not going to be the best career path for you, especially in this, in this uh, field. So the, degree, the careers can range from sport, small business management to senior government or academic positions. Okay, so these degrees, again, basically um, open up brand new, new doors. So the world is your oyster pretty much with these programs. Oh, look, that's a nice picture. I was, I was afraid of looking at a cow. All right, so um, careers as a veterinarian. So um, obviously you just think of the veterinarian that you take your dog and cat too, or your parrot if you have one, or fish, goldfish can come too. Um, so small animal, large animal, mixed practice, zoo animals. Um, and then you can go on if you want to and do further specialization. So you can sit board exams to become a veterinary surgeon or a veterinary pathologist or um, an aquaculture specialist. So you can actually go on and do further studies and, and internships and placements to expand um, or become a specialist in an area. So aqu aquaculture equine or an equine surgeon or just a surgeon um, or pathologist, as I've just said. 
or you can become a government veterinarian, so you can work for Aquis in the field of biosecurity um, in terms of you know, border protection, uh, as well as working in public health and safety and food supply, which is super important. And we talk about veterinary science these days as a one, one health type of thing, where we put human medicine and veterinary medicine together. It's called zoonosis, so the transfer of infectious diseases from animal to human and, and vice versa. Because that's going, that's, and that's pretty much what public health is. So you can work in that arena. And then, of course, in universities, a lot of the academics that will lecture to you are veterinarians that have then gone on to do a PhD and can now teach you. So and they're in research or hospitals and clinics as well as teaching. So, as I said before, we talk about veterinary science or veterinary medicine as one medicine, one health. So we consider veterinary profession as the guardians of all animals and their environment as they impact on human health. Okay, so the safety of food supply and the protection against bioterrorism, zoonotic disease control through effective animal management. So, the, so Hendra virus, and bats through horses to humans. Okay, so that's kind of that realm. So you see it in the news all the time. Salmonella outbreaks that needs to be controlled and managed at the farm level with the flock. Okay. So companion animal health as it relates to human health benefits, protection of wildlife and its environment to enhance our shared environment, advocate for animal welfare, very important, and animal models for human disease. Okay? And without those and without stringent animal ethics associated with that, then we can improve human health as well. So careers in animal science. So if you're interested in, in large animals or livestock or production animals, we have our graduates in a vast uh, range of careers from animal health officers, biosecurity officers, to research, to technicians, um, as commercial nutritionists um, in terms of reproduction and sort of a reproductive technology such as AI or IVF. Um, and uh, basically, a lot of our graduates, graduates go into the like, dairy industry or the pork industry and become management of particular farms and enterprises. So all production systems. So Inghams and Bieta for poultry, we've got a lot of our graduates um, working there as well, okay? So managing flocks. So if we look at um, non-livestock um, animals, so we've got... Um, a lot of our graduates work for the Royal Society of the Blind and training guide dogs or assistant um, dogs, so post-traumatic stress, so dogs that are, have got behaviour specific for more as a um, companion animal to assist with alleviating the post-traumatic stress, or, the, or dogs that have more of a behaviour suited for, for guide dogs. Okay, so those programs, so behaviour and training, uh, we do have a lot of, uh, of our graduates get into that. They go on to do grad dip eds and become teachers in a, in a variety of um, high schools, laboratory technicians, research officers. We've got a couple of our graduates out at Cleland Wildlife Park, so um, national park ranges and in zoos, some at Minato. Animal welfare advisors, we've got people that sit on local councils and look at um, dog parks and dogs on beaches and do surveys, the prevalence of dog attacks, which we have a lovely poster in our marquee about as well. So, you know, it's so diverse. Um, and pharmaceutical reps and as well as journalists. So some of our students go on to do further science communication degrees and then they, they come out and interview us. So I'm like, I taught you. All right. So, you know, again, a degree in animal or veterinary science might lead to a career outside the square. So keep your options open. Come into it just going, I, you, I love science, I love learning, let's just see what, what happens. Okay, because I love animals, um, so we'll just we'll, I'll see what I get at the end. But if you've got your heart set on something, then definitely strive for that. And we'll try and accommodate that as best as we can. So more information. Definitely come to the SAVS um, area in the, the tent just next door to the Braggs here on the Maths lawns. Come and take our virtual tour, just put the headphones on and there's three little videos you can click about our campus, our teaching facilities and our clinics. And then if you're further interested, we do offer information sessions out at Roseworthy campus um, in uh, September. So definitely um, use the link. We've got a pamphlet that you can take home uh, on our stands which has the link to, to register for those. Um, so that's where we are. So we're basically right next door to this lecture theatre. So just come find us. All right. And if you have any questions, um, come and see Emika and I um, now, or you can wait until you get to the tent. So thanks, everyone. Hope to all see you next year in the future.